Hello everyone, um, this is a slightly different video on sort of growing software companies and sort of web apps and SaaS um, in particular. Um, so, I mean, I guess it is a bit of a mix of, sort of my experience, but really um, this is from my favourite book, which is called Getting Real um, by Jason, oh, sorry, it's by 37 Signals, and they are the company behind um, Basecamp, um, Ruby on Rails, if anyone's a developer, they, they built the open source framework Ruby on Rails, which is the most popular framework for Ruby, probably used by millions upon millions of websites. Um, I can't remember exactly how many users Basecamp has, but um, they, uh, I'll find out actually if you know, um, and they have about five other products as well um, within, uh, yeah, within um, their sort of suite of tools. Um, in the past week, they've had 5,000 signups. How many are in total? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Hundreds of thousands, if not. Okay, yeah, 3 million accounts in, in 2019 are using um, Basecamp alone, which is just one of their products. Um, so, and like, believe it or not, their team size at the time of writing this book was only 17 people. It, it may have got larger now, um, but in my opinion, this is like the... It's called Getting Real. It's, I think it's like the Bible of, um, of buildings, software and, and web applications. Um, but also a lot of the principles in it can be applied in, in almost any business and even in like sort of life and, um, and personal development. Um, so like, I definitely recommend you to go and, and buy it. But obviously I'll share some of like what I've been, what I've sort of learned and, and what we implement from it. And I think for any users of Notify, it will sort of help them understand the, the approach that we have to um, to building software. Um, so essentially the general principle is on sort of being in, incredibly lean. Um, for anyone who's read the lean startup, um, like getting real followers, pretty much a lot of sort of lean startup principles um but i i find you know the lean startup itself as a book it is a great it's a fantastic book and the principles in it are great but going off of those principles i think the book itself should be a lot leaner um the lean startup I, I don't know how many pages it has but it's huge um whereas this is just a 187 page book and there's a lot of like images and and things like that in it i think probably every other page um is uh it is an image or some type of, of explanation. Um, and so it's, it's done in a very sort of lean way. Literally, this book is just information that you can take in. There's no sort of just fluff in it, so to speak. It's, it's only sort of real and concise information. And it's written in a very, it's, it's written very, very well. Whereas I thought like the lean startup actually sort of goes on quite a lot. It's, it's not a very lean book, which goes against the principles that it's, it's trying to sell. Um, but yeah, anyway, going over the notes from this book, essentially, when it comes to making a web app, you need to make it as streamlined as possible. So this, this applies from the whole application. You know, you only collect the information that you really need on the sign up page. This is a very well known conversion rate optimization principle, but it only applies in this. Um, and you should constantly be thinking, like, what's the most basic um, setup that we can have for this tool? How can we simplify it? How can we remove friction? Um, so obviously, you, these are questions that you need to constantly be be asking yourself. Um, so with, with Notifier, it's obviously we need an email for communication. We need another website that they're installing the website on. We need someone to install the script and we need someone to create a campaign. So as a founder of a software company, my job is to constantly think about how we can innovate on this and simplify this and, and improve it. Um, so yeah, like here I have like some, some notes on, on doing this. Um, and then we also talk about sort of onboarding. So you need to find out exactly what, what would your user like to do so you can simplify this process as much as possible. Again, for Notifier, it's incre increase conversions, acquire more leads and email subscribers, onboard new customers, reduce checkout abandonment, collecting feedback and increasing social shares. So we're now looking at introducing like an onboarding campaign where the user would actually choose um, what their goal is. And then we offer pre-built campaigns um, based on on the user's goals because when you come into the notifier dashboard um because we have so many different sort of tools and features i think it can be quite overwhelming 
um, for a first time visitor to see everything that we offer. Um, so as a way to combat this, and again, just from sort of reading, reading through this book, um, it just gives me a lot of ideas on ways that we can sort of improve, innovate, and, and even like simplify. Sometimes it's better not to overcomplicate, and it's better to actually simplify and reduce um, things within your application, reduce friction, anything that isn't being used, just, just get rid of it. Um, and it also talks a lot about like, we you can be very crazy about details, you know, from space between objects to what font you're using to the perfect color, perfect wording, um, reducing code size, um, choosing pixel size and, and pricing. Um, and yes, like, satisfaction really is in the details, but, um, this is a book on sort of building like MVPs and it is very focused on just get something out there and, and you, you, you worry about all of the other sort of little details after. Um, it's better to have a product and get sort of feedback, feedback from your users and innovate from there. And after that, then you worry about sort of the, the perfectionist um, side of things and, and, and making everything pixel perfect and, and getting everything exactly spot on. And this is the exact approach that I, I take with Notify. Um, essentially every time that we release a new feature um it is actually released as, as an mvp and i think a lot of people don't quite understand this this principle um the the reason that we're able to sort of innovate and build features and release so quickly is because they're released in an mvp format which means a minimum viable product for anyone who isn't familiar with the term which means that you come you, you've um scrape your idea down to the most simple version that it can be you know you forget about introducing integrations and, and doing all, all this sort of fancy stuff which is often is very nice to have but it's time consuming um, and instead you just get it out there and then based on the feedback we receive from our users and how many people are using the features that is where we prioritize our prioritize our, our development efforts so rather than us spending loads of time worrying about like like they say here, space between objects, um, perfect font type, perfect colors, and perfect wording. We focus on just sort of getting out there, and then based on the feedback that we receive, we improve and innovate from there. Um, so we we really work in like a constant improvement um, fashion. Um, now also like this also gave me ideas on changing the way that we sort of work on our sort of pricing model. For example, with Notify, we could change to work on rather than offering all of our tools um, included under one subscription, um, we could charge sort of far cheaper prices and just give individual tools and, and it would essentially be an individual subscription. So we would charge, I don't know, maybe $9 for every um, widget that you use and you would get unlimited website visitors and this makes things a lot more sort of simple. Um, you know how much you're being charged and every time you add a new tool into your account, every time you add a new one of our features, your subscription would just go up by nine dollars. Um, so this is something I'm sort of planning on, uh, on, on just sort of testing out. Um, they talk a lot about having the most sort of simple pricing model that, that you can rather than having loads of different plans and pricing adjustments and things like this that really just overcomplicate things and it's difficult to understand just come up with the most simple simple pricing model that you can so everyone can understand it and within two seconds of looking at your pricing page people know how much it's going to cost them um so this is just an idea for, for an experiment that i've uh, come up with that i plan on on testing um also it gives a lot of feedback in terms of um onboarding and showing that steps are being co completed correctly um so i have a lot of notes here in terms of when someone is setting up a campaign having sort of logic built in place for if a campaign is set up correctly um and so on and so forth and then we move on to talking about sort of hiring and sort of scaling out a team um they talk a lot about hiring sort of multi-talented individuals they would rather have someone who is skilled in multiple different areas, but not an expert in one, than having like a world-class um, developer that the only thing they can, they can do is programming. The way that they've been able to stay so lean and handle three million users with a team size of, of 17, I think it was, is by having people who can just cover like multiple different areas. Um, you know, they can jump from customer support to writing code, to writing articles and support documentation, to doing design work, to, 
uh, all these different areas that are required. So um, yeah, this is one thing that I've sort of learned quite a lot as well. Our, our best team members are the ones who are sort of multi talented, um, which is uh, yeah, which is it's, it's a very good lesson to learn. Um, another principle that we've adopted from um, from this book is having like Friday as quick Wednesday. Um, for a programmer, I think it's it's always very nice to be like pushing code and getting your code out there. Um, it's it's nice for, to focus on like big interesting projects, um, but to be able to um, to be able to like push your code out there and, and get things moving very quickly and build some momentum. Um, we now have Friday is quick Wednesdays within our um, development board. Um, we filter all of our quick to complete tasks into one specific board and on Friday it's all hands on and everyone is just completing quick wins that we can can build in a matter of hours and release onto the platform um, and then you feel very productive as if you're getting a lot of stuff done um, so and, and it means that we push a lot of updates within within one day um, another interesting principle this is quite quite random um, but I'm just going through all of my notes from it. Obviously, this is taken from, from the, the entire book, and I, I'm just reading off the principles and notes that I sort of took down. Um, but within design, people tend to just design for um, when the state is in use and forget to, to design for when the screen is blank, as in when it hasn't been set up yet, no information has been entered, and also when there's an error state. So I've been redesigning our dashboard to add in both length states and, and error states. Um, it also talks a lot about copywriting as interface design. Um, copywriting is interface design. Great interfaces are written. If you think, if you're just thinking about the pixels, the icons, and and the type, you you need to believe that every single letter in your dashboard really matters. Um, so every every piece of text in your dashboard needs to be informing the user and sort of giving information to to the user. Um, moving on from that, um, it talks about having developers make counter offers. So, for example, when I'm speaking to our engineering team about new features that we would like to release, um, we we now try to encourage the users to come back with a counter offer. So, uh, our, our developers, sorry, to come back with a counter offer. So, if they would say this, it would usually take one week to build. But if we got rid of this, this, and this, and just did this and that, we could build this in in a few hours and then innovate on this later. Um, so this is a very interesting approach that we've been doing, but obviously it's very important to um, what they refer to as uh, managing debt. So if you're releasing MVPs, um, it's very important that, that you go back there and you manage your MVP debt. So if you've released an MVP, that would be considered uh, sort of software debt or, or feature debt, and, and you need to go and improve it because you, you can't have an MVP forever. Um, so it's also very important to build our processes for based on the feedback you receive for innovating on, on these sort of further on. Um, building things fast is good, but they need improving and you need to go from good to great. Uh, next up is all text in your app should be valuable information, nothing more. I think I touched on that earlier. Um, avoiding long-term contracts, sign-up fees and things that cause friction in your app. I, I also touched on that earlier. Um, then also sort of the new features, write about it, share on social media, build a bit of a buzz. Um, I've actually written out a new feature release guide that, that we're going to be using for everything new that we release. Uh, I appear to have lost it now. Uh, where's that from? Uh, that from? Okay, I'm gonna have to try and pull that up later. Uh, I'm not sure where it's from, um, but yeah, I've written out like a 30 stage um, process for, uh, where did I, I spent a while writing that out, that's, that's slightly annoying. Um, yeah, like a 30 stage launch process, um, I can also share that as well, um, once I find it again on on everything that you can do to, to, to launch a new feature. Um, a few ideas here are product hunt, lempod, email, reddit, growthhackers.com, LinkedIn outreach, blog post, um, more updates, email again, sending out an email of the updates that you've done, Twitter, YouTube, um, and launching on beta websites. 
Um, another great way to promote is through education. Um, so by writing up support documentation, by teaching people how to be successful with your app, by teaching people how to do things, um, this is a great, great way to, to promote. Um, and then it also talks about, for example, with customer support, um, they don't have a dedicated support team. They only hire people if they really have to. So currently everyone is actually hands-on with support. Anyone who works in, in their company goes back to support requests, which means everyone is very in tune with the product and the issues that they're having. And it means developers can also come up with um, with sort of better solutions to, to things that they're building. Um, and we also follow a similar principle to this in Notifier. So if anyone is, oh, this is probably my favorite book that I've ever read. Um, I've, I've read it, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 different times now. Um, but every time I read it, depending on what stage you're at with Notifier, I find that I'm coming up with sort of new ideas to um, to release within the dashboard. So this is just like a quick overview of it um, and, and my sort of current take on the book. But I would definitely recommend getting it and reading it. Anyone in software, anyone in marketing, anyone who's interested in entrepreneurship and business, um, developers. Um, yeah, should should be reading this, and even a lot of the principles I think can be applied to um, just to sort of general day to day life itself. Um, so the book is called Getting Real. I can add a description um, where you, you can go and find it. And um, sorry about the background noise. Yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you've uncovered a few insights and understood a bit more about how we we work here at Notifier and our sort of principles towards towards building out. Um, our sort of software tools uh but yeah other than that thank you very much for watching and have a great day